Good evening, everybody. Could we remain standing for prayers? Ashiri Chetan Joshi. And just one bye. Thank you. My pranam to our worshipful Vair Roy Chamdal and my namaskar to the leader of the council, Ian Edwards, and, le and my namaskar to leader of the Labour Party, Peter Curley. My humble greetings and namaskar to all those who are present here. <coughs> A warm welcome to all the new councillors and many thanks to all councillors who have left their services and we wish them all the best. This year has been very special because we have Her Majesty's Queen's unprecedented reign of 70 years, service to the people of United Kingdom and Commonwealth and Jubilee celebrations. We are celebrating this event at the temple on Thursday, 2nd of June in the afternoon. That's a Thursday, first day of the public bank holiday for the, for the celebration from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. We have some invites for the program uh, and hopefully we'll be very happy if few of you can join us with the celebration. The highlight of the celebrations will be attended by some Chelsea in pensioners in their scarlets. Piper Sergeant Shannon from Chelsea Royal Hospital, who have, I've been told that is one of the top Piper in the whole UK. It's, it's going to be a fun day. Uh, it has been a hard year for food distribution program, which we have been doing for over two years now. And I would like to thank Worshipful Mayor Roy Chamdal for his wonderful help and support in this worthy cause. Our prayers are for our Queen and her government. To our Worshipful Mayor, Councillor Roy Chamdal, our leader of the Healington Council, Ian Edwards, and leader of the Labour Party, Peter Curling. And for all those who are present here in the position of responsibility, who have to make decisions hard and easy to serve the London Borough of Hillingdon. Many thanks. I now pass it on to our Sri Chetan Bhai Joshi, our Minister of Religion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Namaste and good evening to everyone. This year, we are not lighting candles, but without light, we cannot do prayers. So, we have another way. God's divine light is present within us all. Please, those who can, imagine this light within your heart. The sacred radiance from eternal light emanating, giving us enlightenment, peace, joy, and lots of happiness. Hari Om Mang. Bhadaram karne bhihisranu yama deva bhadaram pashiye maksha virjajatraham Stire range stushtu vagmusastanu brivese mahide vahitam jadayuhum Om. May we hear auspicious words with the ears. May we see auspicious things with the eyes. May we enjoy a life that is beneficial to the gods and mankind. May the supremely rich God of the earth be propitious to us. Om Sarvitra Shukhinah Santu Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pasyantu Makas Tiddukha Bhag Bhavet It means, let all be happy. Let all be free from debilitation. Let all see goodness. Let there be no victims of sorrow. Hari Om In my final prayers. Dhyohu Shanti Randarkshagum Santihim Prithivishanti Rapaham 
ಸಂತಿರೋಖದಯ ಶಾಂತಿ ವನಸ್ಪತಯ ಸಂತಿರ್ವಿಶ್ವೇ ದೇವಾ ಸಾಂತಿರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಶಾಂತಿ ಶರ್ವಗುಂ ಶಾಂತಿ ಸಂತಿರೇ ಸಂತಿ ಶಾಮ ಸಂತಿರೇಧಿ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಸುಸಂತಿರ್ಭವತು ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೈದಿಕ್ ಮಂತ್ರ ವಿ ಪ್ರೇ ಫಾರ್ ಮೆ ಪೀಸ್ ರೆಡಿ ಇನ್ ದರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಹೋಲ್ ಸ್ಕಾಯ್ ಎಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವಾಸ್ಟ್ ಅಥ್ಯೂರಿಯಲ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿವೇರ್ ಮೆ ಪೀಸ್ ರೈನ್ ಆಲ್ ಓವರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅರ್ತ್ ಇನ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ಹರ್ಬ್ಸ್ ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕ್ರಿಪರ್ಸ್ ಮೆ ಪೀಸ್ ಫ್ಲೋ ಓವರ್ ದಿ ಹೋಲ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಮೆ ಪೀಸ್ ಬಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೇ ದೇರ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಅಲೋನ್ ಓಂ ಪೀಸ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪೀಸ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ Thank you very much indeed. Everybody take their seats please. Move on to the agenda. Apologies for absence. Thank you Mr Mayor I have apologies from Councillor Lewis So we see you Do we have any declarations of interest No interest Okay thank you We have agenda item 3 Cass Edwards Thank you Mr Mayor I'd like to take this early opportunity to congratulate all members on their election to welcome new members to their first council meeting and to express my disappointment that good colleagues from both sides of the chamber are no longer joining us. I would also like to place on record our thanks to former members for their service to Hillingdon residents and our council and wish them well in their future. Turning to the issue at hand, I move the recommendation as amended by the order of business that the results of the local elections, the formation of the political groups and the political balance of the council be noted. There will continue to be uh, two political groups, the Conservatives with 30 seats and Labour with 23 and there will be no change in leadership of either political group the political balance of the committees is shown in paragraph 7 of the report i so move and is that seconded no uh, i second and reserve my right any other, any other speakers yeah, is that noted thank you all right we move on to the fun part my summary of the year well what a year has it been uh some say i brought fun to the mayor to the mayorship some say i even brought a bit of color to the mayorship but I'm not sure what they quite mean by that but i was extremely fortunate and honored to become the first citizen of hillingdon just as restrictions were starting to be eased so that gave me the opportunity to meet individuals and organizations of our great borough later on in the year Joe and Sue managed to get some mayoral visits to the parlor as well and that was always fun so with me being able to go out and about i was able to promote brand hillingdon outside of the borough at official functions Westminster Abbey the Lord Mayor show I was never one to be shy to talk about Hillington to all councillors I also was honored to lead in our praise of our emergency services which the leader initiated this ceremony which I hope will be continue for many many years It was also a very emotional time remembering our fallen heroes. These are people who gave the ultimate sacrifice to ensure we remain free from oppression and tyranny. I also got to meet 
blessed to meet some of our soldiers who were still around. In fact, one gentleman who just turned 100. And I said to him, it was an honor to meet him, and he goes, actually, it was the other way around. I, I, I didn't know how he worked that out. But it was a, a poignant reminder of the current conflicts that we have today, the horrors of war. Nobody's a winner. I also got to, which I enjoyed immensely, was to see different places of worship. And that was extremely rewarding because it, it showed to me what a diverse but close community we still have in Hillingdon. You know, all representatives of different faiths have you seen through my mayoral year, uh, prayers or thoughts that were given were for people from different faiths. But the message was always clear, concise, and extremely strong. Something very, very close to my heart. Sorry, you wanted me to pause, Jeff? Sit, sit there. Thank you. Something very, very close to my heart. Through council initiatives, really good council initiatives, to raise the profile of our small businesses. I mean, this is the heartbeat of our high streets. And they're still going through a very, very tough time, still. And I was able to use some of my limited skill set in giving my opinion of certain parts of their businesses. And I hope that was taken in the right way. I want to highlight two individuals who run non-profit organizations. These were my charities. Just one by who ran the Vrati Garba, which gives fresh fruit, vegetables, different fruits every Tuesday. And Vicky Wheaton, who runs domestic abuse survivors. Two really apt charities in this day and age. And I hope to continue working with them. On a lighter note, I learned to say hello in many different languages. Um, at the citizenship ceremonies, I perform these every week, making people British citizens. So, you know, stuff like Satsiliya Kaal, Jai Shri Krishna, and Assalamu Alaikum roll off my tongue. But add to it, obrigado, niha, hola, bonjour, buongiorno, witam, konishiawa. We even had a couple of good days. Howdy. Agua Bowan, Guten Dog, and the last one on Wednesday was Yaman, whatever that meant. But the young man was very enthusiastic. But the question is, how was this all possible? How could a lad from, who arrived from India in 67, brought up in East London, moved to West London, made West London his home, how the hell did he become mayor of Hillington? Well, first of all, it was down to you members, thank you very much for voting me in. The new ones, no, you don't know, but your predecessors did. A big thank you to Lloyd and his team for running my life for the whole year, last year. Thank you very much. I've got to mention, sitting at the back, Joe, Sue, we've got Andy and Chris, and... I don't believe she's here today, but that tireless, full of energy lady, Lynn Summers. Wow. What an asset to the council. I want to thank Evangeline and my other children for running my day job while I've been on holiday for a year. A big thank you always to mum and dad, who I miss daily, but uh, for them for laying down the foundation for what I have achieved today, of what I am today, or well, the good parts anyway. But above all, a massive thank you to my wife, Rita, who has stuck with me and still stick with me. Actually, no, I should actually call her by her, her, her real... Yeah, Councillor Lekman is right. She's smiling at me. I should be calling her by her real title, shouldn't I? Let's try that again. Above all, a massive thank you 
to Councillor Rita Chamdow. That's right. That's all right. It, it's not mandatory to applause on this side. Don't worry. It's all right. It's fine. It's all right. No, well done, Rita. Thank you very much. Look, it, it's going to be great getting back to normal life. Uh, one thing I really, really missed was seeing my grandson on a Saturday because that was the only day I get sort of sanctioned to be with him and I haven't seen him for many, many months. I believe, where is he? Is he here today? Hello, Luca. I'll see you on Saturday, son. I've been also asked to give some advice to whoever the incoming mayor is going to be. I, what advice can you give to somebody who I think is going to fit the role far better than me, who's much more eloquent than me and far gorgeous? you know, by a mile. So, uh, so uh, all I can say is to whoever it is going to be, uh, stamp your own personality on it and always be prepared because the one time we, it was a visit from Pinkwell School, once again, Councillor Lakmana's ward, and I thought, I had to talk about democracy. So I was expecting the normal questions, elections, how do you get elected, and all the rest of it. So they all sat down here, and I was, the only thing I was worried about was these microphones, because school children notoriously break these microphones, and apparently I have to pay for them. But luckily, they were so well behaved, they didn't touch the microphones. Unlike councillors, which I can mention, but I will not, yeah, stay away from the microphones. And the first question I got was, are you happily married? Which, luckily, Rita wasn't there at the time, but I did. <laughs> Keep my fingers crossed, they say, yes, I did. But it's been a wonderful year, and I wish the best to the mayor for 2022-2023. Thank you. We move on to 4.2. Councillor Dennis, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for giving me the opportunity to nominate Councillor Hagger to be our next mayor. So what can I tell Hillingdon about our first, new first citizen of our borough? Firstly, she will never think of herself as being the most important person in the room. Becky is always interested in others, what they are up to, what their story is, and what help they need. Becky reminds me of that saying, turn that frown upside down. Our next mayor is always smiling and that smile is infectious. I've seen how a smile leads to another smile, which leads to another smile, until the whole room is lit up. The other way in which that saying reminds me of Becky is that I've never come across someone who has such a large capacity to turn a bad situation into a positive legacy. When I first met her, she was known for bringing local residents together to turn an unloved green wasteland, which attracted antisocial behavior, into a small park where children could play safely. As many of you know, Becky's first husband, Cyril, was diagnosed with a brain tumour. This episode was challenging for Becky and her family beyond what I can understand. Doctors not able to diagnose what was happening, no charities to offer information or support. But rather than complaining or feeling sorry for themselves, Becky, Cyril and her family formed the Hillingdon Brain Tumour and Injury Group, driven by a conviction that nobody should go through the nightmare they went through alone. And to quote Becky on this, our first meeting of the Hillingdon Brain Tumour Injury Group was amazing. The emotion and the relief we saw on people's faces as they walked in, seeing that we understood, we cared, and we could help. There were tears, hugs, a family, a band of brothers and sisters were born, and this band grew and grew. And it's fantastic to say that the charity does grow from strength to strength, and we're all so proud of it. Becky is now supported in the charity by her husband, Marios, who specializes in supporting people with post-traumatic stress disorder. Marios will also be supporting Becky in her year as mayor, as her consort. I think he told me in a past life he was a stand-up comedian, which I think must be one of the best trainings someone could have going to be exposed by local politics. <laughs> I know she'll also be well supported by her three daughters, Abby, Polly and Ellie. Becky's faith is very important to her, but for me, one of the embodiments of her faith is how she has faith in all of us to come together to do good things. I know that she's going to enjoy meeting all those people the Mayor of Hinton meets, those people who do good things that make our place a better place to live, celebrate their achievements, learn about what they've done, tell others about it, and encourage people to believe that they can turn their own frowns into big smiles. I hope that everyone in this chamber will support mine and the leader's nomination of Councillor Hagger to be our next Mayor.
Is that seconded? <laughs> Cass Edwards. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. I am exceedingly pleased to second the nomination of Councillor Hacker, my ward colleague, to be the next Mayor of Hillingdon. Becky was my mentor when I joined her and Councillor Dennis in East Coatney's Ryslip Ward back in 2014. And I remember being shown around my own neighbourhood and being pointed out new places, meeting new people, being introduced to those residents and hearing from Becky about what she has been doing for them. Of course, I had known Becky as a councillor uh, through, through the Conservative group, but it wasn't until I started working with her that I came to learn what a star she is when it comes to council ward work. Her bubbly personality is endearing and she is so approachable that getting to know residents is never a challenge. And I don't just mean getting to know their issues, I mean getting to know about them. She is relentless, never gives up on a resident. Even when the council is unable to assist, she doesn't walk away but continues to provide a friendly ear and a shoulder to lean on. The quality that I most admire in Becky is her positivity and optimism. To Becky, every day is a sunny day. And there's always something to be cheerful about. Her energy is boundless and quite infectious. And the mayoral team will have their work cut out keeping up with you. Nothing evidences the, brave, the drive, the bravery and compassion of Becky better than her establishing and developing the Hillingdon Brain Tumour and Injury Charity, the Centre of Hope. As you have heard, Becky turned her experience of tragedy into a beacon of hope and comfort to many, many residents, walking with them through their journey and end-of-life care. Her achievement and that of her family in this work is truly humbling. I know that Becky has the support of her family, Marios, and her daughters, Abby, Polly, and Ali May, and they will be, be behind her all the way during the mayoral year. Mr. Mayor, it is with complete confidence and absolute conviction that I second Councillor Hagger to be our next mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Is that agreed? So, it gives me great honour to declare that Mayor of Hillingdon for 2022-2023 will be Councillor Becky Haggard. <laughs> Meeting agent.
Thank you. Please be seated. And Madam Mayor, the first item of business is to ask you to sign and make the declaration of acceptance of office. Thank you. The Declaration of Acceptance of Office. I, Councillor Becky Hagger, have been elected to the Office of Mayor of the London Borough of Hillingdon. I declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. Members of the Council, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to announce that that concludes the election of Councillor Becky Hagger as Mayor of the London Borough of Hillingdon for the municipal year 2022-2023. Thank you. And now we move on to order uh, sheets number six, the appointment of the Deputy Mayor. I would like to appoint Councillor Sharia Ahmed Walana as the Deputy Mayor of Hillingdon. Thank you very much. May I first take this opportunity to thank my proposer, Councillor Nick Dennis, and also my colleague and leader of the Council, Ian Edwards, for accepting me as Mayor and for your wonderful speeches. Thank you. Thank you also for everyone, too, that's here in the Chambers for accepting my position. It is a great pleasure, and I am truly humbled, to be appointed to serve the Borough of Hillingdon as Mayor for 2022 to 2023. I will not be taking on this role alone, but with the support of my husband and consort, Marius Kaikitis, and my daughters, Pollyanna Hagger and Ellie May Hagger, who will also be acting as consorts. Thank you both in advance for taking the time out to support and serve the Borough of Hillingdon. I would also like to appoint our chaplain for the memorial year, the Reverend Tundi Balagun from Kingsborough Community Church in Uxbridge. Thank you, Tundi, for accepting the role of chaplaincy and for all your support, both past and present. Our duty to serve the borough and its people is shown by uniting all cultures and areas encouraging and binding them together and bringing strength to this community. Recognising the historical places, buildings and cultural diversity, uncovering the hidden gems of Hillingdon and bringing them to the forefront for all to see, playing our part, especially this year, in the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. We are blessed to be living in a borough where so many people actively volunteer within their community. Some organisations are here today. Our voluntary sector is, in my opinion, one of the best in London. With this in mind, it has been a hard choice for us to choose our charities for the forthcoming year. The two charities we have chosen are close to our hearts and covering a vital new and need for the community in our ever-changing climate. The first is DFL, the Daniela Logan Foundation, born out of a brave young girl called Daniela. Her experience of walking the journey with terminal cancer through the eyes of an 11-year-old and its impact on the family this has inspired her parents to help and support others. The foundation supports children with cancer in Hillingdon, covering the gaps in palliative care at home 
and a place to pass away in hospital, and also the recovery after the loss of a child. The Foundation works hard in bridging the gap and is a voice for all children and parents walking the journey of terminal diagnosis, providing the right emotional, spiritual, and physical support needed, working in prevention and education. The monies raised will assist in providing the care that is needed to further develop and grow the charity. My next charity is the magical, marvellous Picture House. This charity, again, is close to our hearts. It is a new charity that's aim is to equip and upskill our community with photographic and filmmaking skills, no matter what age, ability or gender, and includes those with life-controlling issues and disability to help them know they have a purpose and a skill that can be beneficial to others and themselves, to offer a line of hope. At the Magical Marvellous Picture House, the focus is on training, free expression, as well as creating the history of cameras and the importance of photographs and how we learn about our past and future through the eyes of the lens. The monies will be assisting them to find a base and start up this amazing project, which will be open to all communities in the borough. We are looking forward to the year ahead with all your support to bring joy and serve to others. A final word of thanks goes to the past mayor and mayoress for all their guidance in helping us to prepare for this important role. We have seen a beautiful friendship blossom over the last year. And thank you, especially for the welcome tips of how to watch your waistline during termship. <laughs> May we all move forward for 2022 to serve this borough. Thank you. We now move on to order number eight, a vote of thanks to the outgoing mayor. And this is starting with the leader of the council, Councillor Edwards. Madam Mayor, thank you very much and my warmest congratulations on your appointment. It is a privilege and a delight to move the formal vote of thanks to Councillor Chamdell for his service to this borough and its residents during his very successful mayoral year. Roy has worked tirelessly, assisted by his mayoress Rita, Councillor Chamdell, and his, his wife, and he's discharged his duties with distinction, charm, and more than a good dose of humility and humour, always with a smile on his face. The workload of a Hillingdon mayor is enormous, and Roy gave us an insight in his retiring speech. Throughout the year, Roy told us of the different functions and ceremonies he attended, from nearly dancing, Bagra, at the new Lord Mayor's show, to actually dancing on the civic forecourt, wreath laying, other ceremonies, including switching on Christmas lights. Interwoven with these duties was the bit that I have the impression Roy enjoyed most, and that is meeting individual residents and the communities and the community groups and hearing of their stories. On a number of occasions, Roy has spoken of the pride that he had in being mayor and also his pride in our borough. In his acceptance speech a year ago, he committed to do his utmost to fill the role with dignity, respect, and above all, honour. And Roy, you have delivered on that pledge in bucket loads. Yeah, yeah. Throughout the year, the mayor has raised funds for domestic abuse survivors and of Ratri Garba, his chosen charities. And his choices reveal a lot about Roy. As a businessman that started off small, he's passionate about supporting startups. And domestic abuse survivors is a relatively new charity supporting victims and their families as they flee domestic violence. And anyone that knows Roy knows that he loves his food and how important it is, it is to him as a means of connecting and sharing with others. Navratri Garba was therefore an obvious choice. 
in keeping with our undertaking to give to charity the money raised from the collection and recycling of textiles, I will be recommending to Cabinet that we donate to the Mayor's charity the £25,000 received during last year. Roy, you have been an excellent Mayor. You have managed the joust and debate in Council firmly, but firmly. And my memory of being timed out by you early in my leadership still remains. In closing, Roy, if, my, if I may borrow from what you said last year, if your mum and dad were here, they would most definitely say, the boy has done good. And your friends and family in India and the USA should be enormously proud of you and your mayoral year, just as we all are. Councillor Roy Chandal, you are a credit to the London Borough of Hellingdon. Together with Rita, your wife, please accept our thanks for a job exceedingly well done. Thank you. Thank you. And this is seconded by Councillor Curley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Firstly, I would like to congratulate you in becoming Hillingdon's first citizen and our new mayor. I would also like to apologise in advance if I inadvertently refer to you as Mr Mayor. It's a jinx that I always seem to fall foul of this time of year. As is customary, I rise to second the vote of thanks to the outgoing mayor, uh, Councillor Roy Chamdell. And it, was, it, it is with pleasure that I do this this evening. One thing that can't be denied is during the past year, Mr Mayor has kept us to time on our speeches with no fear or favour. A very loud, your time is up, councillor, would boom across the chamber as soon as that red light comes on. Probably one of the strictest mayors we've had for some time. Hillingdon's mayors always raise a considerable amount of money for their chosen charities and Councillor Chamdell is no different. Hillingdon has a proud history of supporting the cross-party work uh, with regard to the horrific subject of domestic abuse. And I would like to take this opportunity to pay a tribute to both Councillor Gardner and Palmer in the work, that they have, the, the work that they do, and it is great to see them both back in this chamber. I would therefore like to thank uh, Councillor Chamdell, the outgoing mayor, for raising money for the charity that helps victims and survivors of this horrific and totally unacceptable behaviour of mostly men who abuse, control and beat women. I'm sure there are a lot of domestic abuse survivors who have been helped by the money and awareness that has been raised by our outgoing mayor of Hillingdon. It is therefore with a great deal of pleasure and appreciation that I second this vote of thanks to Mr Mayor 2021-22 Councillor Roy Chamdell. Councillor Mills. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Chamdell, now past Mayor. Having been your ward colleague for the past eight years, it gives me great pleasure to support the vote of thanks to you this evening following your outstanding mayoral year. We all know that you embraced this year full on immersing yourself in the cultures across our borough, demonstrating your passion of meeting people from north to south. But you really made the mayoral year a Team Chamdal event with amazing support from your family over the past 12 months. As you mentioned yourself, your support for small businesses across the borough has been extremely valuable. And despite your recent injuries over the past couple of months, you've still managed to limp around all parts of the borough. I congratulate you on your successful year but we're also delighted back to have you as part of our group. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And may I also congratulate you on your uh, elevation to the role of Mayor and wish you all the very best for this year. Uh, Roy, I hadn't realised, and perhaps many others of us also were oblivious to the similarity between yourself and Marie Antoinette. Uh, the, phrase, the phrase, let them eat cake, being that obvious link. Uh, luckily for us, uh, when uh, you ha have appeared with cake, which has been many and often, it's always been delicious. 
Roy, uh, you have served this borough uh, as mayor in an exemplary manner, as has already been stated by my colleagues uh, across the chamber tonight. And I congratulate you on your year. I know also uh, that Rita, your mayoress, has been a fine representative of this borough too. Uh, in normal times, uh, and in, if you like, the normal run of things, I would take this opportunity of wishing the past mayor a relax, and mayoress a relaxed year ahead. However, uh, as both you and Rita are now serving councillors, uh, I can only say that I hope you get a rest this weekend <laughs> because on Monday it's back to work. Yeah. Many thanks to you all, both. Thank you, Councillor Akmana. Thank you, Madam Mayor. My heartiest congr congratulations to you and the Deputy Mayor. I'd like to extend a huge thank you to the outgoing Mayor for all the events that he's attended in the Pinkwell Ward. Um, and I, my, my personal thanks to you for accepting an event um, at, at the very last minute. Um, although it didn't fit in with the timeline that you have for in invitations, you very kindly, you and, uh, and Councillor Tandalda, attended the event, which was thoroughly enjoyed by everybody. He was surrounded, it was a ladies' event, and he was surrounded by all the women there trying to take photographs with him. So thank you, thank you so much for all your time in the Pinkwell Ward. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers? Councillor Palmer. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and let me extend my congratulations to you. What can I say? I'd like to thank uh, Roy and Rita, the ex-mayor and mayoress, particularly for coming into my ward and on Anzac Day, which I'm sure we all know is, is one of the most historic things we have in this borough, and I was proud to sit next to the mayor on, an, on the celebration of Anzac Day in April. And I have to say that uh, I've seen the mayor and the mayoress in the ward on several occasions, and they are in danger of being more popular than my good self. <laughs> so I'd like to thank you both for showing such good grace and uh, you've been welcomed warmly into the village and they still talk about you to this day. We will be uh, quelling that a little bit later. But I'd like to thank you both and uh, thank you so much. Any other speakers? No? Okay, thank you. Is that agreed? agreed? Thank you. We move on to item number nine, the report of the head of Democratic. Oh, sorry, skipping too quickly. Presentation of the past mayor and past mayoress badges.
Now we move on to point nine. Report of the Head of Democratic Services, Lloyd. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, before we move on to the report formally, uh, the Mayor has asked me to say a few words on her behalf about the, how she intends to conduct the Council meetings. And so for the benefit of new members of the Council and members of the public present, I'd just like to take a moment to explain the purpose of the traffic light system that you've seen in operation at the front and the protocol of standing to address the Mayor when speaking at Council meetings. So the majority of speeches in council are either five or three minutes in length, as dictated by the Constitution, and the traffic light system is used as a guide to members when speaking. Uh, briefly, when a member starts to speak, the green light is on. When the member has one minute left, the amber light will come on. And when the member has eluded their, exceeded their allotted speaking time, the red light comes on, at which point the mayor will ask the member to speak, uh, speaking to conclude and resume their seat. The Mayor has asked me to remind all members that she would rather not have to cut them off in mid-flow and therefore to tailor speeches accordingly. The Mayor has also asked me to remind members that it is accepted protocol and indeed stipulated under Council Rule 24.1 that all members will stand when speaking unless given dispensation from the Mayor not to and all remarks to the meeting must be addressed through the Mayor. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Uh, 9.1 on your order, the appointment of the Leader of the Council, uh, Councillor Bianco. Madam Mayor, uh, may I uh, recommend that Councillor Ian Edwards be appointed Leader of the Council for the next four-year period. Thank you. Is that seconded by Councillor Mills? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I second and reserve my right. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Is that agreed? Nine point two appointment of the cabinet. Madam Mayor, the appointment of my cabinet is at nine point two and is for noting, and I ask that it is duly noted. Thank you. And we now move on to order nine point three, the members allowance to be moved by Councillor Edwards. Madam Mayor, if it may assist you. I will move each part of the remainder of this report separately as I work my way through it. As you say, 9.3 sets out the proposed amendment to the Members' Allowances Scheme for 2022-23, which was agreed by the Council back in February. Other than in one instance, it does not increase the level of allowance paid, but reduces the number of allowances that may be paid. Following the reduction in the number of councillors from 65 to 53, it is good governance to also reduce the number of special responsibility allowances so that no more than half of all members receive such an allowance. From now, the remuneration of the Mayor and Deputy Mayor will be made under separate statutory provision and their special responsibility allowance will therefore be deleted. It is proposed that the Licensing Committee should mir mirror the present arrangements for the Planning Committees being equitable in terms of function, workload and responsibility. This will result in the licensing chairman receiving an allowance of £23,725.26p, but that paid to the vice chairman, chairman being deleted. And just as there is no special responsibility allowance paid to the second party lead on licensing, it is recommended that there will be no second no special responsibility allowance paid to the second party lead on planning. The allowance for the independent person on the standards committee up until now has been an annual allowance regardless of whether or not the committee actually meets. This is not sustainable when it is common for the committee not to meet in a year. It is therefore recommended to change this to a per meeting allowance. The final change is the deletion of the allowance paid to the deputy leader of the second party. This is not equivalent to the deputy leader of the council who is called upon to undertake council duty in the absence of the leader. The advice is that the role of deputy leader of the second party does not meet the threshold of significant differences in the council time and requirements response and responsibilities from those generally expected of a councillor and should therefore be deleted. I move the recommendation at 9.3. Thank you. Is that seconded by Councillor Bianco? I second, Madam Mayor, and reserve my right. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Is that agreed? 
Madam Mayor, 9.4 proposes the adoption of a remodeled constitution. It is 20 years since the adoption of the first constitution of this borough, and drawing on best practice elsewhere, it is proposed that it is remodeled to improve transparency and understanding. The constitution is not being rewritten, as there is very little change in the content, as much of it is prescribed by legislation. Subparagraph 2.4 of the report helpfully explains the changes and I will draw attention to three of those key changes. Firstly, the diagram at 2.3 shows the new overview and scrutiny functions to be undertaken by our five select committees and how they relate to the new cabinet portfolios. The senior management structure of the council has also been redrawn to improve alignment of service directors and cabinet members, aiding transparency. This is not only to improve governance, but will also be easier for residents to determine for any issue or service which cabinet member is responsible for setting policy, which director for delivering that policy, and which select, select committee for its overview and scrutiny. The second significant change relates to the petition scheme, which is to be modernized with the number of signatories required being determined by the scope of the matter at hand and not the medium by which the signatories are secured. For a local matter, such as a parking management scheme in a road, 20 signatures will be required. For wider issues, such as a proposal to introduce a low traffic zone, which I hope never comes forward, or a change to a council po policy itself, 100 signatures will be required. In either case, the relevant threshold may be reached by paper, electronic, or a combination of two. The final change is to give authority to the mayor to permit adjournment debates only on pressing issues that cannot reasonably be addressed by way of questions to cabinet members or referral to a select committee. By standing order, this must be deferred for consideration at the next meeting. I move the recommendation at 9.4. Thank you. Is that seconded, Councillor Bianchi? Madam Mayor, I second and reserve my right. Thank you. Is that agreed? Any other speakers? No? Is that agreed? Thank you. We now move on to 9.5 on the order for council appointments to outside bodies. Councillor Ian Edwards. Thank you, Madam Mayor. With a reduction in the number of councillors, it is necessary to reduce the number of outside bodies that we appoint to and limit those appointments to only those organisations where there is a clear interest to the council for so doing. This change does not prevent any member from sitting on any appropriate body in their private or councillor capacity, but it would be at their discretion and not at the requirement of the council. The changes are shown in the appendix and I move the recommendation at 9.5. Thank you. Is that seconded by Councillor Biang? Uh, it is, Madam Mayor, and I reserve my right. Any other speakers? Is that agreed? Thank you. Moving on to 9.6 on the order form, the appointment of statutory officers. Councillor Ian Edwards. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The final recommendation relates to the appointment of Andy Evans as our Section 151 officer on the retirement of Paul Waymond and the appointment of Glen Egan as the interim monitoring officer on the departure of Raj Lagaya. Both Paul and Raj have over many years been exceptional officers at the most senior level and have served this authority with distinction. They will both be greatly missed and I'm confident that the Chamber will join with me in wishing them the very best in the future. Yeah, I move yeah, the recommendation yeah. at 9.6. Thank you. Is that seconded by Councillor? It is, Madam Mayor. I second and reserve my right and also share Councillor Edwards' comments in respect of those officers. Thank you. Any other speakers? Is that agreed? Thank you. We move on to item number 10, committee allocations and membership for 2022 to 2023. Councillor Richard Mills. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move agenda item 10 as per the order paper outlining the committee memberships per the addendum circulated to members. Thank you. Is that seconded by Councillor Davis? I second and reserve my right. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Is that agreed? Thank you. Moving on to ninth, item 11, Select Committee's Annual Report. Uh, Councillor Wayne Bridges. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. May I also offer my warmest congratulations to you on your appointment. Madam Mayor, I'm pleased to move the Select Committee's annual report for 2021 to 2022. As an evolution of the Policy Overview Committees, the Council established new Select Committee arrangements to undertake statutory scrutiny responsibility. The Committee continues to put scrutiny at the core of their business and is their duty to be both a critical friend and to drive standards to strengthen Cabinet decision-making. A few notable examples of this are the Corporate Finance and Property Select Committee's review of performance monitoring and reporting within the Council, which has produced sound recommendations to strengthen key performance indicators, leading to improvement in the services delivered to residents. The Public Safety and Transport Select Committee's review into electric vehicles and infrastructure looked at the delivery of this key environmental policy in Hlindon as part of the Council's commitment to achieve zero carbon emissions. The Families, Health and Wellbeing Select Committees undertook a review into the Council's offers of assisted living technologies, exploring potential opportunities to create a more tailored and beneficial service experience for our residents and enabling them to maintain independent lives in their own homes. Madam Mayor, these are just a few examples outlined in this report which highlights the independence of the committees through in-depth reviews using external witnesses and contributions from members and officers to hold the administration to account and to form formulate sound recommendations to Cabinet. In closing, I commend colleagues and officers for their valuable, valuable contributions and express our grateful thanks to our external witnesses for their expertise. I so move. Thank you. Is that seconded by Councillor Jenner? Yes, it is, Madam Mayor. Um, when I was first elected, I had no idea how much this council does. I think somebody once told me over 800 services. It's quite amazing. So we've just had an election where we've been battling against each other, but now we've come together and our committees are a great place where we work together to see how the council can function better and scrutinise those important public services such as the NHS and police and what they do for our residents. So the Select Committee's annual report is 47 pages long. It's a really good read. If after the excitement of tonight, after we've celebrated you becoming mayor, Madam Mayor, you can't get to sleep, I highly recommend it as a read. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other speakers? Is that agreed? Thank you. We now move on to item number 12, statement by the Leader of the Council, Leader and Councillor Ian Edwards. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Last week, the residents of Hillingdon invested in us, the Conservatives, their trust to continue to lead the Council for a further four years. And I'm delighted that the residents of Harrow also placed their trust in the Conservatives. Yeah, yeah. We have been open to work with like-minded councils to secure efficiencies and having a conservative neighbouring borough will open new opportunities that we will explore. During the course of the election campaign, Hillingdon Conservatives were accused of being arrogant and I completely agree that 16 years of control together with a new mandate does give us great confidence. Confidence that our policies of sound financial management and putting residents first are right. Our track record of transformation and continuous improvement shows not only a willingness to change, but an appetite to do so for the benefits of our residents. It was this administration that recommended the reduction in councillors from 65 to 53. You have heard that the cabinet has been reduced by one post and that the special responsibility allowances have also been reduced. Additional savings have been made in the cost of member support and taken together, the cost of members this year will be £300,000 less than last year. With a challenging financial outlook, further change and additional savings will need to be found. When our budget was being constructed, the forecast was that the elevated global and domestic cost pressures post-COVID would prove transitory and that inflation would peak at about 4% before falling back to close to 2% target in the second half of this year. What was not foreseen at that time was Russia's invasion of Ukraine that has led to a material deterioration in the outlook for world and UK growth. On election day, the Bank of England forecast at inflation averaging slightly over 10% at its peak in the final quarter of this year before falling to a little above the 2% target in two years' time. As a consequence of this higher inflation, interest rates are also rising far quicker than had been forecast in the summer of last year, when the bank rate was expected to peak at half a percent 
in late 2024. Such has been the scale of the economic shock that the bank rate is now 1% and is expected to rise to 2.5% by mid-2023 before falling back to 2% by mid-2025. To compound this situation, the Bank of England now forecasts a shallow recession next year with unemployment expected to rise to 5.5% in three years' time. It is very clear that both inflation and interest rates will be far higher and remain so for much longer than the forecast on which our budget and expenditure, expenditure plans were constructed. Madam Mayor, contrary to what you may have heard, this council is in a financially secure position with sufficient reserves to withstand temporary financial pressures. But it would be foolish of us to use those reserves to pay for increases that become permanent, as those reserves will eventually run out, but the underlying cost pressure will not have been addressed. The extent to which inflation becomes embedded in the cost of this council will determine the extent of additional savings that will need to be found or taxation that will need to be rise, raised. Hillingdon Conservatives are committed to be a low-cost authority and therefore future increases of council tax and fees and charges will be the last resort and not the first. This will be the best way that we can help our residents through this cost of living crisis by not adding to their burden. Just as our residents are reviewing their expenditure to make ends meet, so we shall do the same. Officers were preparing for Cabinet an assessment of the financial impact of the February Bank of England forecast on the Council's budget and medium term financial forecast and this is being updated to take into account the deteriorating position reported last week. Officers are drawing up proposals for additional savings that will priori prioritise expenditure to that support our vulnerable residents, ensure safe and clean streets, and that maintain our roads and pavements, parks and open spaces, and other facilities that are widely enjoyed by residents. Intense scrutiny and challenge will be placed on staffing establishment, particularly at middle and senior management level, reviewing how they have changed over time. Our priority will be to protect the front line, and just as we've been able to secure £1 million in saving in the restructuring of the very top tier of management of this council, so we will find substantial saving in middle management. We recognise that of all of our achievements have been secured by the endeavours of our officers, and we shall continue to ensure that they are well rewarded and are valued. But there is scope for us to modernise pay scales, and we will explore those opportunities in consultation with our staff. I have spoken in the past about the need for the Council to better serve residents who want to access our services through the internet rather than over the telephone. We will press harder to bring about this change to improve resident satisfaction and efficiencies. Although we undoubtedly face challenging times, this administration remains optimistic in its ability to continue to bring improvements to the services and facilities that we provide to our residents and that Hillingdon will continue to move forwards. Our residents' weekly waste and recycling collection and free garden waste is assured for a further four years. We will help our families on low income by ensuring free school meals continue during the school holidays, and we will help our tenants to alleviate growing fuel poverty by bringing forwards improvements to our housing stock to increase their thermal efficiency. During PERDA, the Council secured ownership of Broadwater Lake in Harefield, a large lake that will provide better water and outdoor space for our beloved Hoak. Discussion with Broadwater Sailing Club will commence as soon as possible to incorporate their needs in the plans being drawn up. I am more than confident that the new facility that we build will exceed Hoak's greatest expectation and that our new outdoor activity centre will be the envy of London boroughs. There will be no stepping back from the building of Hillingdon's fifth leisure centre and pool in West Drayton. Work has already commenced and completion is expected to be on schedule with it opening in summer 2024. We will be building new libraries in Usley and Northwood Hills and we will complete our school building programme 
now extended with additional funding from government to provide more local places for pupils with special education needs. Work on bringing back into use the listed buildings at Sellers at Cranford Park has also commenced and this will turn Cranford Park into a destination attracting residents who are presently unaware of its existence. We remain undiminished in our ambition to improve access to housing in the borough. The estate re regeneration in Hayes is on track as is our commitment to build an average of 100 new council houses per year over the course of this administration. Please excuse me, Madam Mayor. Sometimes it's easier to work from an iPad. We will make far faster progress on the delivery of our climate change pledge, resolving the future of the Civic Centre, making much better use of its space, improving its, in, in, its in energy efficiency, and developing and letting surplus land and buildings on the site. Madam Mayor, Hillingdon Conservatives will continue to provide the strong leadership that will be necessary to ensure the financial stability of the Council. Residents can have confidence that we will make the changes necessary to keep their council tax low and to retain the services and facilities that make this borough a most desirable place to live and work. Everyone in this chamber is here because we want to make a difference for our local community. Labour colleagues contribute through their opposition role, challenging our programme and service delivery to ensure that we provide the best outcomes for our residents. I'm fortunate to be supported by a very capable cabinet members and councillors that together make up the conservative team in Hillingdon. By pulling together, we have been able to achieve outstanding results, but we will not only be judged on our performance to date, but more so on how we can continue to deliver in the future. Madam Mayor, I am confident of this council's future success, of its continued sound financial management and its practice of putting residents first we will get through this period of financial squeeze and we will emerge a more focused, more efficient and even more highly regarded council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor and Leader Ian Edwards for a very good, sound and informative report. And it's good that we're looking into the future as well and how we're going to reduce and manage. So thank you. Um, just before we end the council meeting, uh, Lloyd White from Democratic would just like to say a few words. Sorry, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, um, really, this is addressed to all our guests in the public gallery. In a few moments, the Mayor will formally close the meeting, which point, if you'd like to exit by the doors at the back, where uh, my team will show you down to the mayoral reception. Unfortunately, I have to keep the members a few moments longer while we appoint chairman and vice chairman of all the committees. Thank you. I'd now like to close the council meeting for tonight.